Good morning, everyone. Jim Clark here at the Synchronicity Sanctuary in Central Virginia to share a contemplative focus with you. And the focus that I want to share with you today is robots create robots until they do not. We're on the brink of developing robots with cyber consciousness. And there's a lot of excitement about the potential for individual consciousness to operate at across multiple platforms, expanding our concept of unified existence. But it's worth considering that the human beings creating these cyber robots are, in a way, functioning like robots themselves. Essentially, robots are creating robots. The question is, can the fragmented create anything more unified? Can the Creator create something greater than itself? Interesting uh, exploration here. Robots creating robots until they do not. So, and you notice in the description here, this is a uh, states here about the potential for individual consciousness. That's egocentric, fear-based consciousness operating across multiple platforms, but how many platforms do you need before you can unify anything? Or is that even related to unification? In my experience, it is not. It is just more of the same fragmented, conflicted, limited human experience, as long as you are tied to it, the limitations of an egocentric experience. Hmm? Ego, consciousness pretending to be what it is not. It's consciousness already. You can't, in my experience, consciousness, the fundamental stuff of what everything is made of, the earth, the universe, is, everything is, is, a, is being created out of Unified consciousness. Consciousness is unified. That's all there is. There's nothing else. Which is why consciousness, when it is experienced, is one of the greatest experiences any human being can have. In my experience of this, it was life-changing. Once in my life, I touched upon this in its purity and in all of its presence. And it changed my life forever. Nothing else could come close to changing the way I lived, what I would consider pursuing, etc., etc. My whole life took a whole different direction after that. And it still is. Because what I have done in the years since then, which is about 40-some years ago, has given me a whole new experience of life that is not connected to the ego. Even though I still have an ego, you have to have an ego to be here as a human being. But going beyond, <clears throat> excuse me, going beyond that limited experience of conceptual re realities demonstrates that unified existence cannot happen with concept. It must be grounded in your moment-to-moment -moment experience because unity already is here. We are made of unified consciousness. We're just pretending that we don't, that we're not that consciousness. We're not aware of it. Egocentric experience is limited so that you can't know that until you're ready to know that. And when you're ready to know that, you will have an awakening experience. It will touch you. You'll explode with bliss and love, and then you'll want nothing else ever again but that, what you really are. So it's, it's interesting that creating more fragmentation, which is the multiple platforms that we could operate under, according to this idea of cyber consciousness, whatever that's supposed to be, would have any significant change other than to increase the fragmentation and differences that already exist in this world. We've seen that demonstration with our uh, latest 
the election process here and you can see the polarization in this country, the United States. But we can always find places in the in this world where there's polarization being amplified for whatever reasons. Concepts are just that, they're just concepts. They're not real. And to try to create something unified out of concepts demonstrates a lack of unified experience. If you have experienced unification, you'll know better. There is no way out of fragmentation when you use concepts that are the tools of fragmentation. And so, in short, my answer is robots create robots until they do not. And that means when they evolve to a point where they have the, the experience of the truth of who they are and what life is, when they reach that, they will reach back to the traditions that come from the East and have been thousands of years old. You don't have to create what's already created, you just have to get in touch with that. And to get in touch with that, you have to discreate the mind. The mind, the, the god of egocentric existence. And one of the driving engines behind fragmentation and creating our differences is so, it's actually a simple question, it's just uh, challenge you in terms of where your feet are yourself. Do you think that this is an argument that's worthy of a lot of contemplation? I don't. Robots create robots, it's, it, what I think of immediately is the way the world has, the human world has existed and continue to exist in terms of recreating, parents recreating themselves as much as they can with their offspring. Yeah? And their offspring going along with it because unless something new in the world shows up, there's not much different uh, for most of human history, which was agricultural and or warfare, and or, you know, living in small tribes, you, you were, in a context where you, there was nothing else to know. So you would essentially just do the same thing your parents did. And then your offspring w would be another reflection of that from you. And so it's just more very repetitious for a long, long period of time. But now we've had many, many different uh, creations that have changed the world significantly in terms of technologies and uh, the internet and the explosion of information. But is the world any better off today? Or is it even worse? Because now we have the atomic bomb, we have the threat of annihilation on a grand scale. And as we look out into the universe with our tools and whatnot, we find other things that we can create as a threat to our existence, possibly. So. What are we really gaining from any of this that's worth the effort in the long run? Just more robots and more fear-based living with new discoveries huh, to help boost the impetus of the fear factor in our existence. So, robots creating robots until they do not is simply what has been going on forever in this world, except it misses one big point here, or does not address that point, let's put it that way. And that is the evolution of humanity towards unity consciousness, which is already happening. It's a creation game, as our teacher taught us, and wherein <clears throat> consciousness consciously intends to pretend like something it is not. To evolve itself once again over many lifetimes to what it is. And in that process, it amplifies its own bliss. When you spend a lifetime or a good part of your lifetime or many lifetimes, I should say, within re-experiencing the limitations of ego and the suffering that comes with that, 
And then when you finally have a breakthrough <clears throat> and evolve yourself to <clears throat> a unified consciousness in some way, that experience itself is so powerful and so great. It is the celebration of consciousness rediscovering itself. Hmm? And that's what the game is all about. It's a celebration. It's not has little to do with with what we call what we think is very real and very important. It's not. It's often been said that uh, I think it was a Sufi tradition uh, that I came across when I first began to meditate myself. That it's people should cry at birth and they should celebrate at death because being in this world as a human being is not a pleasant experience for the most part and it's not supposed to be. It's meant to be a challenge because otherwise we might not ever seek something other than fragmentation and 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 uh, the negativity that we can come up with in life. Hmm? So uh, essentially this this is one of the easier contemplations that I've come across, even though in the beginning when I first looked at it, hmm, I wonder how I'm going to talk about this. Robots create robots until they do not. Human beings creating images of themselves and their children until they do not. And this would be, of course, if you were illumined, if you had a direct experience of your truth, of the consciousness that you really are, then this is what you would want for your children. Insofar as, even though you can't force children to have an experience, it, their time will come when it comes. But your example to your offspring and your love for them would be radically different and could give them an experience that would in some way inform them that there's much more to life than what they see and what they experience. A lot of things that's worth getting into because if your parents are meditators, even though as a child you may have no idea why they're doing this silly thing, why are they sitting on a cushion for hours at a time every day, it doesn't look like that's much fun, but they're, they're demonstrating the value of mastership and their evolution towards the mastership. So they're giving their children something, a hint to say, of something that's worth the effort and the time and the practices that they are demonstrating to their children. These are ro robots that have been discreated because they had a breakthrough experience. They now know that unity consciousness is who they really are all along anyway. And they're just trying to establish a constant experience of that truth. And this is the evolutionary process of the human, human experience. Simple enough, but challenging as well. And this is what the world is really moving towards, even though what, what the egocentric experience demonstrates and shows is that there's so much more to be afraid of when in truth it's just reaching a point of exaggeration and whenever one polarity reaches a point of extreme then it shifts and, uh, and it shifts towards the opposite polarity so all the negativity that is ex existent in the world today is building up and building up and building up <clears throat> and how that will play out I have no idea I don't care how it plays out as long as it does play out huh? and the world can start moving towards a more positive world a more loving world and and uh, creating offspring that, that are in touch with the ways and the technologies that lead to establishing the truth of who you are. So that's what I wanted to share with you today and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it had some value for you 
and uh, I thank you for watching. And um, I'm not sure about next week yet, but uh, just stay tuned and check in. If I do another live stream this following week, which I probably will do, but I'm not sure yet. Because uh, there's a lot going on with the Thanksgiving stuff and whatnot, and I'm not sure how busy I will be in terms of being available for this time slot. So.